Silence, as someone has said, is the mother of prayer and the nurse of holy thoughts. Silence cuts down on our sins, doesn't it? We can't be sinning in so many different ways if we are being quiet before God. Silence nourishes patience, charity, discretion. Sometimes life is so hard you can only do the next thing. Whatever that is just do the next thing. God will meet you there. Fear arises when we imagine that everything depends on us. This hard place in which you perhaps find yourself is the very place in which God is giving you opportunity to look only to Him, to spend time in prayer, and to learn long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, in short, to learn the depths of the love that Christ Himself has poured out on all of us. The secret is Christ in me, not me in a different set of circumstances. A whole lot of what we call struggling is simply delayed obedience. The way you keep your house, the way you organize your time, the care you take in your personal appearance, the things you spend your money on, all speak loudly about what you believe. The beauty of thy peace shines forth in an ordered life. A disordered life speaks loudly of disorder in the soul. Ordinary work, which is what most of us do, most of the time, is ordained by God every bit as much as is the extraordinary. God will not protect you from anything that will make you more like Jesus. Today is mine. Tomorrow is none of my business. If I peer anxiously into the fog of the future I will strain my spiritual eyes so that I will not see clearly what is required of me now. It is always possible to be thankful for what is given rather than to complain about what is not given. One or the other becomes a habit of life. God has promised to supply all our needs. What we don't have now, we don't need now. Faith is not an instinct. It certainly is not a feeling. Feelings don't help much when you're in the lion's den or hanging on a wooden cross. Faith is not inferred from the happy way things work. It is an act of will, a choice, based on the unbreakable word of a God who cannot lie, and who showed us what love and obedience and sacrifice mean, in the person of Jesus Christ. The deepest lessons come out of the deepest waters and the hottest fires. This job has been given to me to do. Therefore, it is a gift. Therefore, it is a privilege. Therefore, it is an offering I may make to God. Therefore, it is to be done gladly if it is done for Him. Here, not somewhere else, I may learn God's way. In this job, not in some other, God looks for faithfulness. Restlessness and impatience change nothing except our peace and joy. Everything if given to God can become your gateway to joy. You are loved with an everlasting love. And underneath are the everlasting arms. We can't really tell how crooked our thinking is until we line it up with the straight edge of scripture. Restlessness and impatience change nothing except our peace and joy. Peace does not dwell in outward things, but in the heart prepared to wait trustfully and quietly on him who has all things safely in his hands. Faith does not eliminate questions. But faith knows where to take them. Things happen which would not happen without prayer. Let us not forget that. One reason we are so harried and hurried is that we make yesterday and tomorrow our business, when all that legitimately concerns us is today. If we really have too much to do, there are some items on the agenda which God did not put there. Let us submit the list to him and ask him to indicate which items we must delete. There is always time to do the will of God. If we are too busy to do that, we are too busy. Leave it all in the hands that were wounded for you. I have one desire now, to live a life of reckless abandon for the Lord, putting all my energy and strength into it. 
No marriage can survive without forgiveness. Marriage is a long-term commitment between two sinners. Worship is not an experience. Worship is an act, and this takes discipline. We are to worship in spirit and in truth. Never mind about the feelings. We are to worship in spite of them. God is God. Because he is God, he is worthy of my trust and obedience. I will find rest nowhere but in his holy will that is unspeakably beyond my largest notions of what he is up to. To me, a lady is not frilly, flouncy, flippant, frivolous, and fluff-brained, but she is gentle, she is gracious, she is godly, and she is giving. You and I have the gift of femininity. The more womanly we are, the more manly men will be and the more God is glorified. Be women, be only women, be real women in obedience to God. Sometimes God's refusals are his mercies. The life of faith is lived one day at a time, and it has to be lived, not always looked forward to as though the real living were around the next corner. It is today for which we are responsible. God still owns tomorrow. I'm convinced that there is nothing that can happen to me in this life that is not precisely designed by a sovereign Lord to give me the opportunity to learn to know Him. Spiritual strongholds begin with a thought. One thought becomes a consideration. A consideration develops into an attitude, which leads then to action. Action repeated becomes a habit, and a habit establishes a power base for the enemy, that is, a stronghold. God never withholds from his child that which his love and wisdom call good. God's refusals are always merciful severe mercies at times but mercies all the same. God never denies us our heart's desire except to give us something better. God never denies us our heart's desire except to give us something better. Accept your loneliness. It is one stage, and only one stage, on a journey that brings you to God. It will not always last. Offer up your loneliness to God, as the little boy offered to Jesus his five loaves and two fishes. God can transform it for the good of others. Above all, do something for somebody else. You will never understand why God does what he does, but if you believe him, that is all that is necessary. Let us learn to trust him for who he is. Sometimes we want things we were not meant to have. Because he loves us, the Father says no. Faith trusts that no. Faith is willing not to have what God is not willing to give. Furthermore, faith does not insist upon an explanation. It is enough to know his promises to give what is good he knows so much more about us than we do. A wife, if she is very generous, may allow that her husband lives up to perhaps 80% of her expectations. There is always the other 20% that she would like to change, and she may chip away at it for the whole of their married life without reducing it by very much. She may, on the other hand, simply decide to enjoy the 80%, and both of them will be happy. The God who created, names, and numbers the stars in the heavens also numbers the hairs of my head. He pays attention to very big things and to very small ones. What matters to me matters to him, and that changes my life. A quiet heart is content with what God gives. It is enough. All is grace. Self-pity is. A sinkhole from which no rescuing hand can drag you because you have chosen to sink. I realize that the deepest spiritual lessons are not learned by his letting us have our way in the end, but by his making us wait, bearing with us in love and patience until we are able to honestly to pray what he taught his disciples to pray, thy will be done. Cruelty and wrong are not the greatest forces in the world. There is nothing eternal in them. Only love is eternal. I am not a theologian or a scholar, but I am very aware of the fact that pain is necessary to all of us. In my own life, 
I think I can honestly say that out of the deepest pain has come the strongest conviction of the presence of God and the love of God. Work is a blessing. God has so arranged the world that work is necessary, and he gives us hands and strength to do it. The enjoyment of leisure would be nothing if we had only leisure. It is the joy of work well done that enables us to enjoy rest, just as it is the experiences of hunger and thirst that make food and drink such pleasures. Our vision is so limited we can hardly imagine a love that does not show itself in protection from suffering. The love of God did not protect his own son. He will not necessarily protect us, not from anything it takes to make us like his son. A lot of hammering and chiseling and purifying by fire will have to go into the process. When obedience to God contradicts what I think will give me pleasure, let me ask myself if I love him. The fact that I am a woman does not make me a different kind of Christian, but the fact that I am a Christian makes me a different kind of woman. Does it make sense to pray for guidance about the future if we are not obeying in the thing that lies before us today? How many momentous events in scripture depended on one person's seemingly small act of obedience? Rest assured, do what God tells you to do now, and, depend upon it, you will be shown what to do next. A man will be as much of a gentleman as a woman requires. The Bible doesn't explain everything necessary for our intellectual satisfaction, but it explains everything necessary for our obedience. What I ought to do and what I feel like doing are seldom the same thing. The devil has made it his business to monopolize on three elements, noise, hurry, crowds. He will not allow quietness. To love God is to love his will. It is to wait quietly for life to be measured by one who knows us through and through. It is to be content with his timing and his wise appointment. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe and don't miss out the chance to see the next video.